And today we're going to be looking at uh, Viva Engage, as you can see on the screen. Uh, my name is Lawrence. I'm uh, an adoption and change management consultant at WM Reply. I've been there for just over four years now. And my role is everything uh, about the people side of technology. So making sure we're doing the training, we're doing the communications, and we're landing the technology well to the users that are going to be using the technology that we roll out to all of our lovely clients. And I'm going to be taking you through Viva Engage today as part of our Viva sort of learning program. We've already looked at Viva Connections. This is the next session in that program of training. So a quick overview of the agenda today. What are we going to be looking at? We'll start off with a quick recap, a summary of uh, Viva. Then we're going to look at Viva Engage specifically. So as a module within Viva, what is Viva Engage? And then we'll spend quite a lot of time of the session today in a live demo, so looking at Viva Engage in action. Then we'll take a look at some case studies uh, and the work that WM Reply we've been doing with our clients to launch Viva Engage. And we'll uh, finish the session off with a bit of a Q&A, uh, taking questions from either within the room or online in the chat. So that's our agenda for the next hour or so. So before we go into uh, Viva Engage, it's just worth quickly recapping what Viva is and why Microsoft have launched it. So if anybody attended Mike's brilliant uh, Viva Connection session, uh, you'll be familiar with this slide. Uh, and it's really included in the session today because it rams home why employee experience is such a big thing for Microsoft at the moment. Uh, the workplace has changed a lot over the past few years. We've seen global trends emerge around the great reshuffle, uh, quiet quitting, so doing the minimum you can uh, without actually leaving your role. And these trends are slightly worrying. And we're, we're now going into the era of the great expectations. So that's where employees are not just concerned with how and where they work, but they want to know why. They want to have a purpose just sort of turning up and accepting a paycheck isn't enough anymore. And employees are evaluating the worth it equation. So is there a human connection as part of their role? Have they got flexibility? Have they got meaning? Are they able to connect with colleagues wherever they are? So this idea of connection uh, and everything I've just said there is part of the wider trend as to why Microsoft had launched Viva to focus on employee experience. But that idea of connection is really important when it comes to Viva Engage. And not just because 83% of employees would be motivated to come in to the office by the promise of socializing with their colleagues. There's a lot more to it than that. So it's because of these trends that Microsoft has introduced Viva as that central employee experience platform uh, that allows people and the teams they're in to be the best they can possibly be. And as you can see on the screen here, uh, Viva is made up of a number of different modules or tools. And of course, we're going to be looking at Viva Engage today. And again, I mentioned earlier that connection. So keeping everyone informed, keeping people connected, inspired, included, whether they're in the office or working remotely. That's the focus of Viva Engage and where it sits within the wider Viva experience. So that's a quick intro to Viva, or again, a bit of a recap if you attended one of the previous sessions. So what we're going to do now is focus more on Viva Engage itself. Uh, what better way to start than through Microsoft's own words? Human connections are a key ingredient of an engaged and successful company culture. Yet building relationships in a world of remote and hybrid work is a challenge. So how can you create a sense of belonging and purpose for employees? Enter Viva Engage, part of the Microsoft Viva Employee Experience Platform, designed to connect people across your company through conversations, communities, events, and open sharing. With Viva Engage, your employees can have discussions with coworkers, build and join communities, get answers to their questions, 
share their unique stories and interests, and find belonging at work. Everything from connecting with company leaders to sharing best practices with first-time managers to creating a place where pet lovers can show off photos. Viva Engage strengthens relationships and helps build a culture of involvement in today's hybrid and remote environments. And because it is part of Microsoft Viva and Microsoft 365, it's integrated into the apps and services companies are using around the world to empower people and teams to be their best. Okay, so in short, Viva is uh, a place or a platform where people can connect, whether it's across Reply, whether it's across any organization, and they connect through the shape of communities. They can create a community, they can join a community, they can contribute to the conversations already happening within communities. And communities can be built and based on anything, really. They can be built on shared interests, and meaningful, important communities that exist already physically within the organization. That could be health and exercise. That could be LGBTQ plus communities. It could be environmental initiatives. It could be pets. It could be Dungeons and Dragons. It can be anything. If there's a shared interest and a shared passion for that community, Beaver Engage is the place for that community to live. And communities can also be uh, created along the line of different roles, different job types. If you wanted more functional communities, that's absolutely fine too. You may have communities dedicated to specific departments. Across the reply organization, you may have a dedicated community for your reply company within the wider group. And anything else that helps you find belonging or feel at home at reply and connect with colleagues is what a community on Viva Engage is for. So that's uh, sort of a bit of an introduction to Viva Engage. And some of you may be thinking, this looks and feels a little bit similar to Yammer. Uh, and that's because it is. Effectively, Viva Engage is the new version of Yammer. The only difference is that they've released, they being Microsoft, of course, some really cool new features to help people connect across an organization. And it's surfaced through Microsoft Teams. So where you would normally go to Yammer as a standalone application or tool, you can now access Viva Engage directly through Teams. So you don't have to keep flicking between lots of different apps as part of your day-to-day -day ways of working. So what are the benefits of using Viva Engage? Why do we care about joining communities and connecting with our colleagues? And that word connect is an important one here. So you want to connect with colleagues across reply. You want to be able to share learnings. You want to be able to share expertise. You want to be able to find information and answers and get feedback from a much broader audience than you may be able to access through other apps like Teams. And then we've got Build. So we've mentioned communities. Viva Engage gives you that opportunity to build communities that support diversity, that support shared interests and initiatives across the organization. And then we've got Spark. So bringing people together, breaking down those silos is going to spark innovation. It's going to give you access to people that you may not have access to or may not have the chance to work with as part of your day-to-day -day role. And then the final benefit here is exchange. Exchanging knowledge, exchanging ideas, exchanging conversations. Uh, and a big part of Viva Engage and what Microsoft has, has driven behind it really is those two-way conversations, particularly between leadership and other employees. And employees want to feel that their voice is being heard. Leaders want other ways to engage directly with their employees and colleagues. And Viva Engage gives them that opportunity in the form of Q&A sessions, in the form of Ask Me Anything, in the form of some of the leadership functionality that we're going to see in the tool in just a second. So exchanging ideas and conversations is a big part of Beaver Engage as well. So quite a detailed slide here. Don't worry about reading every single line. I won't go through every single line on the call today, but you may be thinking, I use Teams to connect with my colleagues. 
why would I use Viva Engage? Is it not doing the same thing? And it is a question we get asked a lot at WM Reply by our clients who are trying to work out their communication strategy, their digital workforce, their digital workplace and employee experience strategies. And the answer is Teams and Viva Engage do slightly different things. So starting off with uh, Teams, Teams is for your inner loop, as Microsoft calls it. It's for close collaboration with people that you work with and know regularly. So you could have a team dedicated to a specific project that you're working on with a handful of people. Maybe you've got a department that you're in that has a team. And Teams is brilliant for that collaboration on that smaller scale with a handful of people or a smaller group of people that you probably work with as part of your day-to-day. And again, Microsoft calls that our inner loop. Viva Engage is for what Microsoft calls our outer loop. So Viva Engage gives you the chance, as I've mentioned, to connect with people you maybe don't know or you wouldn't normally have a chance to work with as part of your day-to-day role. If you wanted to launch an initiative or get feedback from a wider audience, Viva Engage allows you to tap into that wider network across the organization, whereas Teams is for that day-to-day chat, working on files together, collaborating together as part of a smaller group. Okay, so that's a bit of an intro to first uh, Viva and the employee experience, and then Viva Engage, obviously what we're focusing on today. So what I'll quickly do now is hop into my other slide, my other screen, and we'll go through a bit of a demo as to what Viva Engage looks like. So I've got Viva Engage open on my screen here. And the first thing you may notice is that this is being surfaced directly through my team's desktop app. So I don't need to go to another application. I don't need to go to browser. If I'm working in Teams on my mobile or on my desktop, my laptop, I can access Viva Engage by clicking on the icon on the left-hand side here. And if you can't see Viva Engage in Teams, all you'd need to do is click on the three dots and search for Viva Engage. And it will come up and you'll be able to pin it to your handrail as I have done here. And when we first click on Viva Engage, we're taken through to the Home tab. So you can see a couple of icons along the top here. I've got Home, Communities, Storylines, Leaders, and Answers. So the Home feed effectively surfaces all of the content that's relevant to me based on the communities that I'm in, the colleagues I've interacted with, the conversations that I've contributed to, This is my personalized feed of content. So that's really powerful if you're in a communications role uh, in that you know everybody within the organization has that sort of personalized feed of content. And at any point, I can go down and I can interact with the posts or the information within my feed. I can leave a comment directly in these conversations. And that's all we need to know really about the home feed. It's your personalized feed of content. Think of it as the same as when you open up Twitter or X as it's maybe known now, Facebook, you've got that personalized feed of content based on what you find interesting and what you've interacted with in the past. But Viva Engage is much more than just a social media tool for enterprise clients and organizations. So I've got my home feed up here. The next feed I've got, or the next tab along the top here, are my communities. So I mentioned earlier, Viva Engage is built on communities that you can create or join based on shared interests and other things that I've mentioned already. So in my communities tab, I can see all of the communities that I am in, and I can expand this by selecting the view more option, and that will show me all of my communities. Going back into my communities tab, I can also see communities that are recommended to me, again, based on my activity, based on what I've interacted with and found interesting on Viva Engage, based on what my mutual connections are also a part of as well. So if I've got lots of people in my team that are all a part of a community that I'm not, Viva Engage will recommend that community to me. 
And again, I can always click view more and I can see and discover all of the communities available to me on this network. I can start that by my recommended communities or I can filter them alphabetically or by community size. I can also search for communities using the search bar in the top right hand corner here. We'll come on to storylines, leaders and answers a little bit later on in the demo. The first thing we're going to look at, though, is a bit more information about our communities. So what I've got here, as I've mentioned already, are all of the communities that I can join. But let's say I want to create a community for uh, a running club, for example. The first thing I'd need to do is search and make sure there isn't already a running club community out there. Because the last thing we want is to have duplicates of very similar or the same communities, because then people won't know which community to join and which uh, activity and content is maybe the most up to date. We want to have one sort of community for each purpose. So once I've searched for the communities and found there is not one out there similar to the one I want to create, I can select create a community. Uh, now, the first thing I'd need to do is give this community a name. So let's call this the Reply Running Club. Uh, Beaver Engage will check that that name isn't already being used, so I know we're good to go because I don't have an error message. And I can add a description here outlining what this community is for. People passionate about running. Now, at this point, I can add members to my community if I want to, uh, but I may not want to do that just yet because I might want to get the community set up and nice and branded and looking great before I add people into it. So I'm going to leave that step for now. And the last thing I can do when creating my community here is select this edit option. And then I can choose whether or not this community is public or private. Now, a public community means that anybody at Reply or the organization that we're looking at if we're talking to a client, anyone within that organization can find and join this community and also view the content within it. If I set up a private community, it means only approved people that are accepted into the community by the community admins will be able to join the community and see the content within. Nine times out of 10, we'd say communities are better if they're public. We want people to be able to find communities organically, find them themselves, and join them if they're interested. So the majority of the time, we'd want to create public communities, but there will be certain use cases where you just want to control who can and can't enter a community. Uh, so for the purpose of this demo, I am going to create a private one, but the majority of communities we see tend to be public. So I've hit the Create button at the bottom right-hand corner there. And now I'm taken directly into my community. So it looks fairly generic at the moment. So the first thing I may want to do is just brand my community. Oops, let's take it through to another window. Apologies. There we go. So the first thing I want to do is brand my community. Uh, and what I would want to do first, you can see I've got this generic RC to reflect the name of the community. And let's change that. So I'll upload a picture that reflects the nature of the community that I've created. So I've got my running club picture there. And I'll also want to update my cover photo. So again, clicking on the update cover photo, I'll add that option in here. And you can start to see, okay, our community is starting to get the right look and feel. It's instantly recognizable. The name is nice and simple. It's clear as to what this community is for. And people could flick past this community. Oh, I'm actually interested in running and join it if they want to. We want to make our communities nice and recognizable and easy to identify among the other communities on the network. As the creator of the community, I've automatically been added as an admin. So you can see there's only one member, of course, at the moment, and that's myself. And that star icon just shows that I am the community admin. If I wanted to add additional members to my community at this point, I can hit the plus icon here. And I can pick 
a colleague that I want to add to this community. I can also import a large number of members to my community using a CSV file if I want to. So now we can see myself and Enrico are the members within this team. Uh, Enrico has just been added as a member, so he can view the content within this community, but he can't change or customize the community settings. And there are a couple of other things I can do to make this community nice and intuitive and useful for its members. I can add an info option here and just add a more detailed description of my community. I can pin useful resources to my community as well. If there's a particular file or intranet page or external website that I know people in this community would find useful, I can pin that to the community here. Okay, so I've got my community set up. Uh, what I can do now is I can quickly cover off some of the different ways that we can post into our community. So you can see I've got this text box here, share your thoughts, ideas, or updates. And just beneath that, I've got my discussion, question, praise, and poll options. They're the four main ways that we can post into a community on Viva Engage. So starting off with discussion, I can post a generic post into this community. So think of discussion as just a normal post, a generic uh, update you're sharing to that community. So I might want to add a welcome message to this community. I won't type one out in full, but I'll just add some text here. I can format my text in ways you, you're probably familiar with. Uh, I can add uh, attached files. I can add GIFs. I can add some sort of visuals, some images, because we want our communities to be nice and engaging. We want them to be as visual as possible. And I can post this into my community. Now, because this is the welcome message, I might want to just click on these three dots here and pin this conversation to the top of the community. So that's the first way I can post. I can just put a generic message or update into this community using the discussion option. The second option I have is question. So if I click on the question option here, you can see it does look slightly different to the discussion post. I've got the blue banner here. I've got the question uh, sort of wording in the top left-hand corner. And that's important and useful for two reasons. And I'll come on to those in just a sec. I'll pop my question in here. Uh, is there a running club in the Manchester office? Because that's where I'm from. Select Ask. And that will now be added to the list of content uh, within this community. Now, this blue banner and signposting this as a question is useful for two reasons. Firstly, it makes other people in the community nice and aware that I am looking for information. I'm looking for help. Can someone help me with a response with the correct answer here? So in this case, someone might send a response. Yes. And I can at mention people within my responses as well. So Enrico is already in this community. Enrico runs the oops, Manchester Running Club. And post a response. Now, the second reason that questions are great if you're looking to find information is that I can use this button here to mark the best answer. So if I hit that tick, that response will be listed as the best. And that's really useful because if lots of people start responding to this post, I don't necessarily know which is the best answer. The best answer that's been ticked will always be elevated to the top of the list of responses, which is useful for me as the person that's asked the question. It's also really useful if other people have similar questions as well. They can find this and the best answer will be elevated to the top of the feed. So that's our question post. I've also got the praise post. Again, slightly different look and feel. We're signposting the type of content or the type of message this is. And the praise is a really nice feature in Viva Engage. It lets us publicly celebrate success, celebrate wins, and praise our colleagues in front of other people. So I might want to type in my message here. Congrats to, I'm going to use Enrico again, for beating his 
personal best in the 10K last week. I can choose who I am posting so they get a notification. I can change uh, the sort of banner here or the icon at the very top of the post so it's reflective of the praise itself. I can also at mention Enrico's manager here, for example. So Enrico gets all the praise and gets the notification and people can respond saying, well done. But I'm also making sure that Enrico's manager sees this as well because it's a job well done and I want people, the, all the important people to see this post. So I can hit the praise button and you can see a nice praise post has now been added to my community. Again, communities are all about connecting with colleagues, sharing ideas, celebrating successes, sharing experiences. So the different ways of posting into our communities are built to do exactly that. And then the final option I've got here is a poll. So I mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of Viva Engage is reaching a broader audience. You're not working in that siloed way. You've got access to a much broader audience of people. So you might want to get some quick feedback. You might want to get some initial ideas or some thoughts on an idea that you have or a new initiative. And a poll is a great way just to do a bit of a pulse check, a very visual, instant way of getting feedback from people within a community. So what I need to do here is add my question. When would people be interested in joining a running club? And my first response might be uh, midweek before work, and then midweek, oops, after work, and then the final option, weekends. I can hit the ask button, and then people within this community will see that it's a poll, they'll be able to vote, select the vote button, and then you can get instant results, instant feedback from that community. So lots of different ways of posting into our community to help us engage, interact with people within that community. The final thing I will just draw attention to here is if I go back into our discussions post, you can see I've got this announcement feature. Now, if I tick that megaphone icon there, that means that this will send a notification to everybody within the community, regardless of their notification settings. So I do, as a community admin, not everyone can use this, I do have a way of cutting through other content and other conversations within the community if there's a really important update that needs to be seen by everyone. Best practice, not to use that too often. You don't want to be sending lots of notifications to people that have maybe customized their settings to receive fewer notifications. The announcement is for that uh, important message that needs to cut through the noise that would, uh, would otherwise be in that community. So that announcement feature is useful, but probably best used sparingly. Okay, so they are the different ways I can post into a community. Uh, that's all happens within the conversations tab within my community. I do have the option to look at the about tab. So obviously this is a brand new community. We don't have many insights here yet, but I can see the number of active people. I can see the number of messages that have been posted into my community. If I select see more, I've got some nice in-depth analysis and analytics for this community. So if I'm a community admin or I'm managing a particular community, I can see how it's performing over different periods of time and act accordingly if I wanted to. Okay, so that's an intro to the communities area of Viva Engage. The next thing we'll take a very quick look at here is storylines. So everything we've looked at so far has taken place within the context of a specific community. You find a community, you join it or create it, and you post into that community. But if you did want a way of just posting to the wider Viva Engage network, you can do that directly from your own personal storyline. It's a great way of building your own personal brand 
within Viva Engage. It's a great way to post updates that maybe you want to get out there, but aren't relevant to a specific community. You just want to share it with anybody that's interested. So think of stories and storylines as your personal space within Viva Engage, similar to say a Facebook or Instagram profile that you may have or Twitter profile. So once I've clicked through to storylines, I can see the updates that people have posted. I can look at the people that I'm following and have a look at their content as well. Beaver Engage recommends on the right hand side who I might want to follow so I can follow some of my other colleagues as well. So when they post to their stories, I will get that update. And I can click through and view the storylines of those people as well and view them and click through them. And it's a really nice way just to see what other people are up to. If there's somebody you're particularly interested in or would like to follow, maybe it's one of the senior leaders within the organization, you can do that using the storylines feature. So that's how I follow and take a look at what other people are doing. If I wanted to add to my own storyline, I can select that option in the top right hand corner here. I can select create. And the thing about storylines and stories is that they're supposed to be very visual. So I can record something directly from my mobile device, or I can upload a photo or video that I already have. So I'll select upload. I'll add my picture. Let's wait for that to pull through. And while that's pulling through, I'll just add a description. Great day volunteering in the community with the best team. Select post. And then when people click on my storyline, they will see that pop up. And it, again, it's a nice way of just broadcasting what you're up to and a great way of just following the activity of people you're interested in across the organization. A great tool for leaders to use as well, just to broadcast their activities and to keep people interested and engaged. So on the topic of leaders, we've got a couple more tabs to look at before we end the demo and go back into our slides. If I select the leadership corner, I mentioned earlier during the presentation that a big thing for Viva Engage is allowing and facilitating those two-way conversations between leaders and other employees. And the leadership corner is a great way to do that. So think of this as a tailored feed, only showing the content that's been posted by leaders in the organization. So I can have a look down here. I can see what specific leaders, they might be senior managers, they might be directors, they might be partners, have been posting to their storyline or the activity they've been engaging with on the wider Viva Engage network. So I can keep up to date with their activities. A really cool feature on the right hand side here is I can see the communities that those leaders are in. So if I wanted to say join one of those communities because I know the leaders that I want to keep connected with are in them and active within them, Beaver Engage is telling me which those communities are and I can flick through to different leaders and it shows me the communities they're in and it will suggest leaders that I should follow Again, based on the other leaders that I follow, based on mutual connections and who they're following. So the leadership corner, a fairly new bit of functionality in Beaver Engage, but a really good one to connect and stay connected with the leaders within an organization. And as a leader, it's a great place for you because you know that your content and your activity is being seen by people across the network. And then the final tab we'll take a look at here is the answers section of Viva Engage. Again, a fairly new bit of functionality within the platform, but think of this as a place to go to find information. If you've got a specific question, you can ask that question here and Viva Engage will recognize the type of language and terms you've used in that question and it will present answers to you based on questions and answers that have been provided previously. So I can see a question here that's been tagged with chat GPT, for example. I can view more and see the full question. And then I can see any responses that have been provided by the experts 
within that field. Or alternatively, if I'm one of those experts or uh, subject matter experts, I can post a response to this question and provide an answer myself. So on the right hand side here, we can see badges too. And they're awarded to experts that do post regularly and answer questions within Viva Engage to pull through into this answers section here. And if I wanted to ask a question myself, I can hit the text box at the top of the screen here, type in my question. So where can I find some beginner content on chat GPT? And I can tag it as chat GPT. And then I can post that question and that's now been added to the answers section of Viva Engage. And a subject matter expert can then find that question and provide an answer if they know where to point me in the direction of if I'm looking for some beginner content on ChatGPT. OK, so that's probably all we've got time for when it comes to the demo. Um, We've had a look at our home feed, so our personalized feed of content within Viva Engage. We've had a look at our communities and how we can find existing communities based on our shared interests and join them or create new ones ourselves. We've had a quick look at storylines and how we can view the storylines of people we're interested in and in following, or how we can post to our own storylines for the people that follow us. And then we've taken a quick look at the leadership corner where we can see the content that's been posted and the activity of our leaders. And then we had a quick look at the answers section as well. So with that, I'll hop back into our slides. And we will go through now, make sure we're on the right slide. Yes, we are. So. If that's a bit of an intro to Viva Engage, a bit of an overview in the shape of a demo, we just wanted to go through some stories uh, that we've come across at WM Reply and the clients that we've helped uh, roll out Viva Engage or make a success of Viva Engage that's already in place at the organization. So I'll start off with ASOS. So ASOS were looking to migrate from workplace. It was underused. New employees at the organization didn't necessarily know enough about it to use it properly. And Viva Engage was positioned as the tool. It was Yammer at the time, but Viva Engage positioned as the tool to bring ASOSers together into a space where they can connect, they can share knowledge, they can learn together. And the way we approached this at WM Reply, we aligned the different bits of functionality and how we position Viva Engage with ASOS's specific values, so being authentic, brave, creative, and disciplined. We then employed and upskilled a champion network through a number of on-site immersion sessions, art of the possible sessions, so they really understand the power of Viva Engage and they could advocate Viva Engage on the ground to their colleagues. We also engaged with senior leadership so that, again, they're upskilled on how to use Viva Engage, and they knew the value it could bring to them as leaders. And we did a lot of training in the shape of community management. We delivered basic training to the wider audiences as well, and delivered training to champions, as I mentioned earlier, alongside a really creative uh, launch campaign that got ASOS really, really excited. So here's a snapshot of what that sort of creative campaign looked like. We'll probably get a bit of a better look and feel uh, with a bit more of a video into that campaign. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we've just got some, some figures and metrics here to show the success of that campaign, as well as some visual cues here of the, the physical launch within the ASOS office uh, down here in London. So a really great campaign, great work from our creative team here at WM Reply to pull that together. And I think you'll agree it's really on brand with what ASOS looks like. It looks like an extension of their website. So really great job. And it is a really successful Beaver Engage community. Obviously, it was Yammer at the time, but it is now Beaver Engage. So a real success story for us with ASOS. And then the last example here is uh, the work we've done with Sky. So the challenge that Sky had was that they had a really great customer experience and the offering to customers is, is great and it looks slick and it's really well delivered. But the employee experience at Sky was not quite so slick. They had lots of systems and they, they didn't know which ones to turn off. They were very bad at uh, turning off systems that were no longer being used. And it was confusing where to go to get the right updates and to stay connected with other colleagues. Uh, they wanted to give their people a voice, particularly in light of COVID-19 that was uh, happening at the time, unfortunately. People were transitioning to a working from home model that Sky was not necessarily familiar with. And they really wanted to keep the Sky culture alive. And they uh, identified Viva Engage, or again, Yammer at the time, as the tool to help them do that. So WM uh, reply, we worked closely with the internal comms team, and we identified Sky Sports as the primary pilot group. So we ran a number of workshops um, with the comms leads within Sky Sports and the Sky Production Services. We upskilled and trained very, very senior leadership within Sky Sports, as high up as the managing director of Sky Sports. We got him in a room, downloaded Beaver Engage onto his mobile and showed him how to use it so he could then start using it straight away, having walked out the door. Uh, we worked closely with Avio Reply. They did a really great job on pulling together uh, some launch materials, uh, launch assets, training assets as well, because they were very familiar with the Sky branding. They've done a lot of work with Sky in the past, so it was great to connect and work in tandem with another reply company. And then COVID-19 rolled in, and we actually had to roll out uh, Beaver Engage after the pilot to 10,000 Sky users in the space of two to three weeks. So we, were, we had to pivot. We were agile in that way, but they were so keen to get Beaver Engage in place because they saw it as the vehicle to channel that Sky culture, even though people are working remotely or were working remotely at the time. So we pulled together lots of assets, again, working with Avio. So the next video uh, is a bit of a nod to the great work that Avio did with us uh, in launching Viva Engage at Sky. Dare Sofia che realizza il suo primo video. Ok, vieni un po' per qui. Hi everyone, Rob here. Um, I wanted today to give you an update on the coronavirus. Hi everyone, I couldn't make it to stand up, so I wanted to send you this message via Yammer. So just flick through the video there. Again, a real success story uh, for us. And you can see the metrics on the screen here, um, sort of 30,000 users 
uh, on Viva Engage that has gone up now. Um, the number of Viva Engage queries that were answered via the help community that was set up on Viva Engage instead of a service desk uh, was obviously very, very impressive. And within three days, we had 64% of Sky employees that it had been rolled out to um, jumping on and signing into Viva Engage. So again, a real success story for us and of course, working with Avio. But when it comes to our involvement with Viva Engage at WM Reply, it's not just about the launches. We've done a lot of work with Sky post the original launch and the original pilots a couple of years ago now. Um, we've helped them reposition Viva Engage as not just a tool for use within the UK, but also a group-wide uh, sort of connecting tool, which is now being used across six different countries uh, across Europe. We've helped them work with Tygraph, which is an analytics tool and sort of dashboarding tool that helps them see the metrics and usage across Viva Engage. So we've been called in as sort of a, a trusted partner to help with those conversations. And we've also actually placed resources directly in the internal comms team at Sky to help monitor and drive engagement on the uh, Viva Engage network that they've got there now. So a real success story um, with Sky and with ASOS. And it, it just shows the power of Viva Engage. And hopefully the session today has given you a bit of a, an insight as to what Viva Engage is, how it can be used, how we can support that at WM Reply and some of the success stories that we're already seeing on the tool. And with that, I think we can hop into a Q&A. So thank you, Lawrence. We already have a couple of questions. Uh, well, more than a couple, but uh, some have been sorted <laughs> already. Uh, but we have one at the very beginning. Let me say, if your employee is not using social networks in personal life, do they have to use Viva Engage? What if this person is a company leader? Uh, so the question there, if somebody's maybe not familiar with social media, uh, if it's a leader particularly, how do we get them involved in Viva Engage? Is that, am I understanding that? Perfect. Yes. Uh, yeah, really good question. And actually, the messaging around Viva Engage has probably shifted. Um, Yammer back in the day was often referred to as the social media platform for work. Um, Viva Engage is sort of stepping away from that narrative now uh, and more towards it's an employee experience tool. It's a way to keep people connected, whether they're working remotely, whether they're in the office, but in a different office to someone they want to connect with. So I think absolutely it's a great point, not necessarily leaning into the social media narrative because you will alienate people that haven't used it before. So articulating the value, again, if it's a senior leader, getting it downloaded onto their mobile, helping them in a one-to-one, -one, bit of a VIP session just with them and getting them up to date on the platform and showing them the value, showing them the conversations that are happening on Viva Engage. And you don't even need to say the word social media, the, the sort of value that it can bring can hopefully speak for itself. Another tip, if there are senior leaders that you're trying to get on board to Viva Engage, engaging with any executive assistants or personal assistants for those leaders is a great way to help them. If they lean on a particular person to support them day to day in their leadership role, if that personal assistant is sold on Viva Engage and is using Viva Engage, they can help that leader day to day. If they are struggling with a bit of functionality or if they are struggling to use Viva Engage, you're then getting that support from another angle. So yeah, but good question around the social media links. Thank you. Uh, very similar to what you were commenting, but it's more when the engagement is over. How do you make sure people uh, keep using the engaging their communities? Yeah, great question. So as with most launches, you might get a spike of activity and then it might die down ever so slightly. So the way that you can maintain that engagement, maintain the usage of the platform, the first thing you can do is get community management nailed early. So identifying a group of people that are going to be the managers of the important, the big communities on the network and ensuring they've been 
upskilled on what it means to be a community manager? How can they drive engagement within their community? How can they coax conversations out of people within their community? How can they mix up the content to keep it fresh and keep it interesting? If you do a lot of that work at the beginning before launch, you've then got a a sort of a group of people that are going to be active and they know all the best practices and top tips for driving engagement within their communities. The other thing you can do is at the very beginning, have a clear strategy for Viva Engage and where it fits in with other communications channels. Having those, maybe a set list of communities that you are agreeing needs to be created before launch so that when people first go on to Viva Engage, they see it as a place of value and they will come back. If you launch Viva Engage and it's empty, people are going to have a look, not see much value, and then maybe not come back. So having that strategy, identifying the areas of the business or the communities you want to create up front, and then making sure you've got that group of community managers on Viva Engage within those communities that have been created, make sure they are upskilled in how to drive that engagement moving forward. Thank you. Next question is, what are the Viva Engage competitors and is it possible to migrate to Viva Engage from those? Yeah, absolutely. So a great example of that is Workplace, and that's the story we went through with ASOS earlier on. There are quite a few different platforms out there. I would say, first of all, the answer is yes, we can absolutely migrate clients, organizations across from other systems into Viva Engage. We've done that a lot at WM Reply. We're doing it right now as part of live projects. I would say a big selling point or something to help drive people from maybe those other systems to Viva Engage is that pretty much all of the functionality we saw on the demo today is included in existing Microsoft licensing. So if they have extra uh, budget that's being spent on these other systems, if they've got uh, sort of their their contracts with those other systems running out anytime soon, it's a great way, to, a great time to have that conversation because Viva Engage is effectively free. It's included in their Microsoft licensing, and they're paying extra to use an additional system. So, by positioning it that way and positioning the wider Viva suite value that comes from connections that we've already seen in Mike's session a little while ago and some of the other tools within Viva, it's quite a compelling narrative. But yeah, absolutely, it's possible to migrate existing communities, existing content from another system into Viva Engage. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Hope it was useful.